living and growing up here in the valley, I had no idea what Michael was talking about, about the, the growth and the vision of this great university and this great engineering college. Today you look around and you, you see the fruits of our labor all over the valley. You see happy, you see homes being built, you see people having jobs, you're seeing families being raised, you're seeing second generations now coming back to our university. It's just that it's, it's, it's very exciting to, to the Fulton family. The most interesting thing that I have found about my major is that I can apply it to solve literally any problem that I run into, not only mechanical engineering problems. But my degree has given me a lens with which to look through when I'm trying to find a solution. I bring different things to the table when solving problems than the electrical, chemical, industrial, and other engineers do. Even if that problem isn't my area of expertise, I still bring an interesting perspective to it. So I think rarely do we think something in engineering is repetitive or monotonous. Uh, typically engineering is always hard and challenging and that's why I really love engineering is because no matter what you do, it's always going to be a challenge that involves um, problem solving and innovation and really looking for something, you know, for a way to do it better or in a way to achieve something. So engineering is really always fun. And once you solve it, you might even continue to grow upon it and that's why I love engineering. I came to ASU because I knew there would be endless opportunities and resources that I could utilize and take advantage of to set me up for success academically and professionally. ASU is a leader in innovation, which is a large reason why I chose it. The world is evolving faster every day, and I felt that ASU was the best place to help me prepare to work in this ever-changing climate. I came to ASU because college initially wasn't an option for me and I wanted to change that. There were no funds saved, I didn't have a chance to complete high school traditionally, and due to my circumstances and means at the time, ASU was the first college that accepted me after passing my GED, so it was a surreal and just also realistic moment that they were a part of. I came to ASU because I've been an employee since 1999. Seeing what it had to offer over the years made ASU the easy choice. Engineering has opened so many doors for me. Uh, I'm a first generation college student, so the fact that I'm able to say that I graduated from ASU in an engineering uh, major is really big for me and my family especially. So uh, engineering has changed my life tremendously, especially through ASU. Engineering has really, really changed my life. And not only that, but it's helped me find my place in it. It's given me the skill set to help others in such an exciting, creative, creative and fulfilling way and has given me my purpose in life. I knew I was on the right path in engineering when I got involved with research and I realized that I could apply my knowledge to answer questions that are vital to the advancement of technology and society. That realization was really powerful for me to grow as a student. Engineering has shown me that I am capable of much more than I once thought, that I can do math and science and also be creative at the same time. My degree gives me the tools to create tools for others that can substantially change their lives. The one thing I will take from my Fulton School's experience is designing for the customer and having a purpose in mind and really using that entrepreneurial mindset. I truly learned that throughout my time at Fulton and um, I think that it's a great experience that I can continue to use. One thing from my experience in the Fulton Schools that I'm going to take with me is my ability to overcome and learn from failure. One thing from my experience in Fulton are the connections I made with my peers. I know these relationships will last even after I graduate. Engineering has shaped the way I approach problems and view challenges in the world. It has taught me to never give up, to learn to adapt to changes, and to always look for a way to improve. Being an engineering student allows a person to develop a mode of thinking that's innovative because engineering students are always seeking to solve problems. Um, this creativity and collaboration required in engineering will stick with me for every aspect of my life and that's not even just in aspects that are technical. Each person that's really set to graduate from Fulton Schools, I always feel is going to bring something amazing and a different perspective.
our ceremony officially begins with the activation of the sacred ceremonial lightsaber, which dates back in Fulton School's lore to the time of the slide roll. Now, to lead the ceremony is Dr. Kyle Squires, Dean of the Ira A. Fulton Schools of Engineering and Professor of Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering. Hello, and welcome to our Spring 2020 Convocation. Today is unique. This convocation is unlike any that we have held before, obviously in large part because we're celebrating at a distance. It's also different because a lot has changed around the world, including at ASU over the past few months. While our mode of celebrating is different this spring, the significance of convocation and of our students' graduation is unchanged. Convocation is always special because we honor and celebrate you, our students, and the ceremonial passage from the Fulton Schools of Engineering to the next step that awaits you on your life journey. And we acknowledge the friends and family who have supported you to get to this point. Convocation ceremonies challenge graduates to go out, to make an impact, to change the world, you hear that in every set of convocation remarks. And you should, because graduation marks an important transition in your life. What is very different about today compared to previous convocations is that the world isn't waiting for you to change it. It already has. It's changed significantly from what you might have been expecting to move into a few months ago. And it will continue to evolve. And these changes will present new opportunities. Moving forward, it will be more important than it has ever been to spot opportunities where others will not, to understand what is possible, and then engage with the ideas and tools cultivated through your degree preparation. Those are the qualities that will prove invaluable as you navigate a changing landscape. What will be important is that you address those challenges that wait for you, whatever they might be, to move towards them and take them on. Contribute ideas, solutions to engage, to make an impact. Now, one of the great things about degrees in engineering technology is the unbeatable way we learn to think about addressing challenges, creating value, helping others, and improving society. Your preparation, now culminated by your degrees, will serve you better than ever in the world you're now moving into. As we think of the challenges society faces right now and upcoming, one of the most powerful ways that Fulton Schools can address them is by doing and emphasizing what we do extremely well faculty generation of knowledge that is transmitted to our students and in the process producing highly skilled talent. Today that means more than 3,330 graduates. That impact is transformative to the valley, the state, and the nation. We stated in the past that it was the best time ever to be a builder, a technologist, a scientist, an engineer. Today that's still true, perhaps even more so. For our undergraduates, the process you've undergone of learning, doing, designing and building that leads to disciplinary excellence combined with their emphasis outside the classroom creates a graduate who can learn anything, do anything, and go wherever you want. At the graduate level, the Fulton Schools are about the ideas, discoveries, translation, and advanced coursework that makes you a master learner of your discipline and a leader in research performed at the very highest levels, convincing your peers why that new knowledge matters and in turn setting the future direction of the field. At the core of advancing all of our students at all levels are our faculty, the centerpiece of the knowledge, ideas, and discoveries that they so skillfully transmit to our students. And today, as you transition from student to graduate, you're ready. No matter how this graduation is delivered, its meaning in your life and what it represents throughout the rest of your career will endure. The significance of what you have achieved has not changed at all. Today, we celebrate you, your accomplishments, your hard work, in your willingness to face change and embrace it and help engineer a better world. Congratulations, graduates. Ira Fulton grew up a few yards from the intersection of University and Mill Avenue. He is a successful businessman who never forgot the lessons that his mother taught him about helping others. He and his late wife, Mary Lou, invested $50 million into President Crow's vision to transform engineering at ASU. They're the reason we have an undergraduate research program scholarships for top students around the country, world famous faculty, and the reason that we have become the leading engineering program, having grown from about 6,000 students in 2003 to nearly 24,000 students this year. Their investment catalyzed a reaction that has changed who we are and what we do. He's been there for you at E2, Fury Symposia and scholarship events. To some of you, he is Dr. Fulton or Mr. Fulton. Within our family, 
He's Ira. I want to talk to you about graduation. You're now alumni. Don't forget your, uni your, your university. We need your help con continually. The average graduate today, 60% of you will stay in Arizona. 39% of you will go out to, to where you come from. And then to me, I think that's exciting. And what I'm saying to you is that then since you graduate either as, with your bachelor's, don't forget education. I am a young 87. And, and I love education. I Driving down here today, I says, gee, we're, we're, we're getting slow on the campus. We only count four, four cranes up up. So I either talk to Michael about getting, getting back and getting this thing moving forward more. But it's, it's exciting to what we have. It's exciting for what you have. We, we, we have a, we, you have a great, uni I don't know what got you slick, this great university and this great college, but I'm glad you did because we need you. I want to wish you nothing but the greatest. I want you, I want to thank your parents for getting you here. I want to thank for these, these professors putting up with you. And I love you. Thank you. I am Stephen Phillips, Professor of Electrical Engineering and Director of the School of Electrical, Computer, and Energy Engineering at Arizona State University. The Palais Outstanding Doctoral Student Award was established by Professor Joseph Palais, longtime graduate program chair in the program, and his wife, Sandra. The award is presented annually to the best graduating doctoral student in the electrical engineering program. Faculty advisors nominate students, and a faculty committee selects the awardee. The recipient receives a plaque and $1,000. This year's awardee is Junji Jang. Junji joined the school in, as a graduate student in August 2015 after earning his undergraduate degree in physics at the Lanzhou University in China. He has 10 journal papers in prestigious publications, such as the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences and the Journal of the Royal Society Interface. Junji's work includes applying machine learning algorithms to complex network systems. Application examples include understanding how to deploy different pollinator species to interact with crops and predicting extreme weather events. Please join me in congratulating Junji Jie, the 2020 Palais Outstanding Doctoral Student. Thank you. Hello, engineers. Speaking on behalf of the engineering alumni, we want to congratulate you for not only earning your engineering degree, but we want to highlight you earning your degree despite all the obstacles and changes during this unprecedented time. Your resiliency and perseverance to overcome these challenges is truly admirable. Now, it is okay to be disappointed and upset that you will not be able to physically celebrate among your peers, professors, and family, but please try not to dwell on the negatives. I encourage you to reflect back on the positive memories and moments that you did share within our Fulton and ASU community. Your ability to adjust to change, especially big change like this, will only further set your class apart as being individuals that will not allow anything to stop you from reaching your goals. Now that you're engineers, I invite you to join our ASU Engineering Alumni Chapter. Our alumni chapter allows you to stay connected with our Fulton community and provides alumni participation through student events and industry partnerships. Please know that you do not need to stay local to become involved. I eagerly became active in our chapter after moving to Tucson to begin my career at Raytheon Missile Systems. Right now, I'm speaking to you from Boston, Massachusetts, as I continue to work for Raytheon Technologies. To learn more about how to join our chapter, please Google IRA Fulton Schools Alumni Chapter. There, you will access a page that has our board members' contact information. 
I look forward to having you join us. Congratulations class of 2020 and go Devils! Good afternoon everyone. I am honored to serve as your convocation speaker and thank God for this opportunity. These circumstances aren't exactly what we all had in mind when we first imagined graduation, but I'm really happy that we all have a chance to celebrate together. In no way should we feel that our accomplishments are of any less value. In fact, I would go as far as to say that the class of 2020 is more resilient than ever. My heart goes out to all of those people affected by COVID-19, whether that be directly or indirectly. It is astounding how much the virus has affected the way that we conduct our lives and just how many people it's touched. It is also astounding, however, just how quickly we've been able to adapt and how every individual effort is valued during this time. I don't believe that anyone should ever discount the power that they have personally. In third grade, I never thought that I was naturally inclined to pursue engineering because math was my most challenging subject. In fact, I still find myself occasionally using the finger trick mentally when doing multiplication by nines. Even so, my dad once told me, if someone has achieved something before you, there's no reason why you can't do the same or better. These words really stuck with me and I strongly believe that any person has the potential to be the next phenomenal researcher, engineer, astronaut. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if one of you guys were the ones to find the vaccine to coronavirus. We must merely overcome the fear that we don't have the required capabilities. In addition, I feel like every single person has their own natural skill sets. I'd like to relate a story to you guys about an event that you're likely familiar with, our E2 camp. In the camp, one of the activities, we were faced with a giant spider web of ropes crisscrossed across each other, and we had to get across to the other side without reusing a gap. All of our teammates had different strengths. Some of us were tall and could get through gaps at the top of the web. Some of us were small and could get through more constricted gaps. And some of us were strong and could help others to get through to the other side. But in the end, working together, we all managed to get across to the other side. Um, I feel like this directly highlights how we must foster a community that nurtures the unique potential in all of our neighbors. And we can see this in the world today as the world is united to fight against a common enemy. A famous quote from Chaos Theory goes, something as small as the flutter of a butterfly's wing can ultimately cause a typhoon across the world. And this directly applies to human potential. Every small bit of effort that you put in to positively affect someone else can enact a micro change that will in the future potentially cause a much greater change. And as Sun Devils, we're in a unique position to do so. We've had some of the best research facilities, we have a diverse and intelligent student base, and we are number one in innovation, ahead of Stanford and MIT. We've all heard this phrase countless times during the last four years, but why is it so important? Why does being at the forefront of new ideas and pushing our boundaries matter? My fellow graduates, we must have a thirst to be our best because the world isn't waiting for us to gain the courage to address its problems. During college, I lost two grandparents and an uncle. These events really put into perspective how much we miss what we used to have and just how limited our time on earth is. Surely humans are at a loss against time, except for those who take advantage of it to do the most good they can have patience and faith, and encourage others to do the same. This is a reminder for both you and I that we work to make every day worth missing. This becomes easy once we realize there are so many people out there waiting to see what engineers can do, how engineering can save the world. You, along with your community, have the potential to be the world's next superheroes. Let's use our superpowers. I'd like to thank Fulton Engineering for honoring me as convocation speaker, to my friends and family for supporting me over the last four years, and to all of you for taking the time to listen to this speech. Hope you guys stay safe and mark today as a momentous occasion of achievement. Take care. Finishing undergrad in quarantine has been an interesting experience to say the least. From learning how not to get distracted during Zoom lectures, to completing some treasured experiences like research and student organizations from inside my bedroom and of course playing an ungodly amount of Animal Crossing instead of working on my capstone. Aside from these memories in quarantine, there are so many small moments at the Fulton schools in ASU that are now cherished memories, like seeing almost everyone I know passing by ECG patio or running across the first floor of Noble Library to get a table from a group that just left, or saying hello to the crossing guard every morning outside of the Fulton Center on my way to my research lab. And personally, I was really excited to see the ridiculous number of people taking grad photos around campus, knowing that one day, one of those people would be me. 
I know it's cheesy to say that we will always have our memories within the Fulton schools, but we really have so much to celebrate as we really have accomplished a lot in the last four years. We are leaving with our degrees and the stamp of approval from our amazing deans, professors, faculty members, coordinators, research mentors, and other staff. And throughout this whole process, we have the continued support of our families and have made lifelong friendships with our peers. Whether your path takes you to graduate school or industry or none of the above, you will always have these memories and accomplishments to look back on. Graduating from engineering school is no easy task. And it is important to remember that there are many people that did not or cannot stand here with us today. In October of 2019, my close friend Jennifer Baruman passed away. Jen was one of my first friends at ASU and my roommate fall of sophomore year. And from the first time we met before freshman year, my vision of graduation included her. Life afterwards was hard to say the least, but with the support from my family and friends, each day got a little easier. This experience made me reevaluate my priorities. What was the point at the end of the day? When everything was said and done, why was I working so hard? I was so focused in undergrad that it felt like I blinked and it was all just over. I spent so much time on the end result that I forgot about the journey. Whether it is your family, your friends, your classes, your research, or your community, it is so important to find whatever matters to you and maximize your time to your best ability. Current events to me have shown that we can learn, lead, inspire, and grow the best all together. Our world is complicated, and as we get older, there's no plans for it to become any easier. But as engineers, we have a unique toolkit to approach a lot of these problems. Our training in STEM gives us the opportunity to use our expertise for the benefit of others, but it is up to us to actually participate in these opportunities. Be passionate, be bold, be an advocate and ambassador of your interests. And most of all, don't forget to be appreciative of everyone that has helped you along the way. Thank you, mom, thank you, dad, and thank you to my sister, Neha. And to the Fulton Schools, thank you again for this opportunity. Congrats to all the other graduates and forks up. Go Sun Devils. I would like to acknowledge our highest achieving undergraduates. Students graduating with more awards have earned all their credits at ASU while achieving a perfect 4.0 grade point average. That's kind of hard. Our students graduating from Barrett, the Honors College, or with some level of honors, cum laude, magna cum laude, or summa cum laude, you've worked hard at your studies, and these designations are well deserved. For all of the graduates who are currently serving or have served in any branch of our nation's military, we thank you for your service and we thank your families for their support as well. We should also recognize Peter Lafford for his dedication and commitment to this ceremony. He has read all of your names in a record-breaking effort this semester. Brielle Januszewski is the university's outstanding undergraduate for the Ira A. Folt Schools of Engineering. Brielle exemplifies the interdisciplinary approach to engineering that we promote in the Folt Schools. Today, she is graduating with a bachelor's degree in environmental engineering, biological sciences, and political science, as well as a minor in French and a certificate in international studies. She applied her skills in a wide range of opportunities and has earned a prestigious National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship Program Award that recognizes her bright future as an engineering leader. Esti Crespo is the university's outstanding graduate for the Ira A. Folt Schools of Engineering. After returning to high school in her 20s and earning her GED, ST poured her heart and soul into the Graphic Information Technology Online Undergraduate Program. She is now finishing up a 4 plus 1 accelerated master's degree alongside a full-time job and volunteering to mentor underrepresented girls in technology and media in Austin, Texas. ST is the university's outstanding graduate student for her resilience and acts of service in her community. Every semester, faculty members select one undergraduate student from each degree program as their outstanding graduate. Students are designated as outstanding graduates based on their academic performance and for their contributions to the success of the Fulton School's mission. Impact Award recipients are honored for their significant contributions and accomplishments beyond the classroom. These students are recognized for excellence in one or more areas of research, leadership, 
public service and social entrepreneurship endeavors that have beneficially impacted the ASU community as well as larger communities in Arizona and elsewhere. Okay, you've made it. First, through this very unique ceremony, and second, through this part of your journey with the Fulton Schools of Engineering. Congratulations again. We're very proud to call you graduates of the Ira A. Fulton Schools of Engineering, now new alumni, and you should be proud of what you've accomplished. The next phase of your journey starts in a really interesting place in time. If you trust in your preparation as engineers, builders, and technologists, you will find opportunities all around. Seek out those opportunities, move to them. By doing so, you'll have advanced your knowledge and skills, your professions, and the societies we serve. Finally, the only remaining piece of advice that I have to offer at this point is, go for it, and as soon as you can. You should know that life inevitably becomes more involved as we get older, will bring more responsibilities that can make it harder for you to try that next new thing. So don't wait, and you're going to discover that it is the journey that you're about to take that matters so much. You have only two remaining assignments. First, stay in touch with us in person or on social media. Stay involved because we want to hear from you. Second, pay it forward. You benefited from help along the way. Be on the lookout to help others. It makes a difference. And in fact, in the world you'll next be shaping, that notion of paying it forward is more important than it has ever been. Once again, congratulations. Greetings from a social distance. We wish we could be there with you to celebrate in person. The fact that we cannot meet today will stop me or my faculty from congratulating you on this very special day. We want to congratulate you and wish you the best. Quick shout out to all the graduating Grand Challenge Scholar students. Those amazing epic students. Electrical and power engineering students. Biomedical engineering undergraduates. Human systems engineering students. The GIT graduates. The polytechnic engineers. The environmental engineering graduates. And a shout out to my baby brother, Kaden. I would also like to recognize our online graduates, many of which are active military veterans and first responders. I know the year ended kind of strangely, but I wanted to congratulate you on great achievements. You know, I hope you don't mind, I dressed the part. It felt wrong to congratulate you if I wasn't uh, in the appropriate regalia. Um, we wish you the best. I wish you a really happy graduation day, and I tip my hat to that. Thank you for letting us be part of your Sunday school journey. We're so happy for you, so excited. It's been a wonderful accomplishment. You've done great things. You are all an amazing and talented group. You are the first cohort to graduate with a fully fledged entrepreneurial mindset. We hope that when you leave here, you're not only engineers, but you learn things like resilience and you learn things like perseverance. I think you've shown a great deal of resilience and innovation with finishing out the semester in a much different way than when you started. You are resilient. You are persistent. You've worked so hard and we're so proud of you. Go Devils! We're very proud of you. Go Devils. We're proud of you. Be proud of yourself. Remember, we will be rooting for you no matter wherever you are, no matter whatever endeavor you choose to do. You're off to great things. This world needs you more than ever. And now you have everything you need right here and right here, so you go make it happen for yourself. This isn't the end, but rather the beginning to an amazing future ahead of you. And from now on out, it's not a multiple choice anymore. It's a choose your own adventure, and you're prepared to thrive in any choice you make. I'm sure there are great things awaiting you. I'm sure you will all do very well and see much success in the years ahead. Can't wait to see what all you do. I'm so proud of your tenacity, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you accomplish in the future. Your future is so bright, I have to wear shades. We want you to come back often and visit the house. Um, then you can tell us all the exciting things that you're accomplishing out in this big world. Congratulations, class of 2020. Congratulations, Congratulations to the class of 2020. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2020. 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 Congratulations, graduate. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.